films aim to reflect reality, our cinematic stories are populated with death-defying stunts, and our blockbuster movies stretch credibility with their exhilarating action sequences. That's not true of Roar, a film from 1981, recently re-released via Drafthouse Films. Directed by Noel Marshall, a producer on The Exorcist, Roar tells the story of a zoologist living and working in Africa. The twist? Marshall's character loves big cats, and his home is filled to the brim with lions, tigers, and pumas. All of the animals used in the film are real, and Marshall and his family built up a considerable collection of wild animals in the States. Noel Marshall enlisted the help of his family, his wife Tippi Hedren starred alongside him, and his daughter Melanie Griffith joined them, and their sprawling cast of 150 lions, tigers, cheetahs, and jaguars. There's a sense of insanity that permeates throughout the film. Marshall himself moved his entire family to California, bought a ranch, and began collecting big cats, in order to start filming. It's certainly a film that belongs to the 70s and 80s filmmaking sensibilities. In many ways the film is a testament to the dangers of unchecked ambition, of the follies of man, and his relationship with animals. The film doesn't function well in terms of style, or even substance. For most of its 90-minute runtime, Roar tells a frenzied and out-of-control story that sprawls with disorder until Marshall's character returns to the ranch, bringing a sense of order. There's a certain sort of old-fashioned subtext about the family unit, the Eden of sorts that Marshall thinks he's fashioned, and the Swiss Family Robinson-style finale is as absurd as it is calming. Its tale of animals and humans attempting to coexist peacefully is helmed by Marshall's real-world family and its attempts to befriend hulking roaring wild cats. Marshall's opus is brazen, the story of the production more interesting than the film itself, and there are few films that have such scope and such stupidity inherent in their makeup. I recommend that viewers mentally twiddle their thumbs while watching Roar, rather than bypassing Marshall's blunder entirely, because Roar is worth seeing at least once. It's a difficult sit because, although it's a cat lover's dream, it's also somewhat stupid. Humans run, make noises, and run some more, while giant cats flex their muscles and revel in enormous groupings. If you see Roar in search of bizarre spectacle, you might get what you bargained for. You can also feel like a knucklehead who was duped at a carnival sideshow. The amount of injuries and mistakes related to the people working on this film outweigh the impact of this film as a whole, so if you're in the mood to see actors get mauled have a peep.